Hi, thanks for your interest in this little mini lecture on spatial analysis in Leaflet using TurfJS. This is actually lesson number 55 in a whole course that I have on web programming using Leaflet. And if you like the lecture and you want to learn more, there'll be information at the end of this video on how to sign up for the full course. So let's get started and I hope you enjoy it. Welcome back students. This is the beginning of a new section on spatial analysis in the client with TurfJS. And I'm really excited because this is where the real power of GIS comes in. Now we can make that power available to anyone with a web browser. They don't need any special license or knowledge or anything else. All they need is you to design a web application that gives them access to that power. So what is TERF? It might be easier to start with what TERF is not. TERF is not a part of Leaflet. It's not a plug-in. It has nothing to do with Leaflet formally. TERF is an open source JavaScript library for conducting spatial analysis. It could work with any mapping API that can handle GeoJSON data, and that's pretty much all of them. TERF takes its input of spatial features as GeoJSON, which makes sense because it's a JavaScript library, and JavaScript works very well with GeoJSON data. And it does work very well with Leaflet because all Leaflet geometry objects have a two GeoJSON method, and that makes it easy to use Leaflet layer data as an input to TERF methods. TERF has methods for measurement such as length, area, and distance that are useful for working with geometries such as center, centroid, bounding boxes, and convex hulls. It has a lot of methods that can be used for linear referencing operations, such as finding a point a certain distance along a line, splitting a line into segments of equal length, etc. It can do a lot of basic spatial operations such as buffering, intersections, dissolving, etc. It can do some basic spatial join operations. It has some methods to help with sampling, including creating polygon grids of various types. And it has some helpful utility methods that can do things like creating GeoJSON objects from coordinates, combine single geometries into multi-geometries, or turn multi-geometries into feature collections of single geometries, or combine features into a feature class, etc. The best way to think of TurfJS is as a toolkit. There isn't a menu system with predefined functions like there is in a desktop GIS, but it has enough tools that you can generally implement the functionality that you need, sometimes with a little creativity and some JavaScript to glue everything together. And this toolkit approach has some advantages and disadvantages. If you're doing something simple, it may take you a bit more time to implement because it's not simply automatic, although simple problems are usually pretty easy to address with the toolkit as well. The advantage, and I think it's a huge one, is that if you understand how to use a toolkit, you can solve non-simple problems as well, and you don't have to try to shoehorn your unique needs into someone else's predefined solutions. The toolkit approach means never having to say, I can't do that, and I think that will become clearer as this section progresses. So let's take a quick look at the TurfJS documentation, then we'll write a few lines of code that will buffer our burrowing owl habitats with a 300 meter buffer to show the area in which disturbance is not allowed when burrowing owls are actively nesting. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is look at the documentation for TurfJS. And if you took my introductory course, you may remember how to do this. You just search TurfJS, and the first thing that comes up is TurfJS.org. That's the home page. And then there's some examples and some getting started information if you want. But all the documentation is here under API. And so you'll see it has all the different methods that are available with Turf on the left-hand side, and you can scroll up and down through that. We're going to look at specifically at buffer, and we see that the buffer method takes three arguments or parameters. It takes a feature to be buffered, a radius as a number, and that's a distance, and then a unit string. And it says any of the options supported by turf units. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually tell us what turf units are here. But up here it says that the units supported are miles, kilometers, and degrees. Now you'll notice that the input features that's going to be buffered can be either a single feature or a feature collection. Buffer will work with both, but not all turf methods will. Some will require one, some will require the other. So it's important that you understand the difference and how to figure out exactly what you need for the method that you want to use. Because turf also has some methods that allow you to convert from feature to feature collection and vice versa. And we'll use some of those later on in this section. And then it tells us that what this method returns, and what it returns are buffered features. And those buffered features might be a feature collection of polygons or a feature collection of multi-polygons, depending on the input type. So again, it's important to know what type of output you're getting so that you can work with it in your code. 
All right, so your homework assignment for tonight is to take a look at the TERF.js documentation, take a look at all the different methods that are available, and try and get a good understanding of what each of them does and how you might use that to do some useful spatial analysis. All right, let's take a look at our map. You'll see if we zoom in, we have these yellow polygons that are our burying owl habitat. And these are the polygons that we want to buffer. We want to buffer them by 300 meters, because 300 meters is the distance at which no disturbance is allowed during periods when burying owls are actively nesting. So let's go to the editor. And the first thing we're going to do is declare a variable. We'll go up here right underneath layer burying owls. We'll declare layer burying owl buffer. And we're going to do another one too, and it's going to be called JSON Burring Owl Buffer. Because remember, turf takes input as GeoJSON. It doesn't understand leaflet geometry objects at all. And so we need to convert the geometry object to GeoJSON. And this JSON Burring Owl Buffer is going to store that GeoJSON. And then we'll create a layer from it using the leaflet GeoJSON constructor method. So let's go do that. So we're going to come down here to our data loaded event handler for the layer burring owl. Because we want to wait until this layer is completely loaded before we create the buffers from it. And this is the event handler that responds to that event when the data is completely loaded. So the first thing we'll do is create our GeoJSON. And we'll do that by calling the turf buffer method. And I just realized we never downloaded turf and loaded it into our application. So we'll do that in a bit. But right now I'm just going to write the code. So all the turf methods operate off the main turf object, just like all the leaflet methods operate off the main leaflet object. That's we access through the capital L. Turf we access through the word turf. And then we call the buffer method. And the first parameter we have to pass it is a GeoJSON feature or feature collection. And we're going to pass it an entire feature collection. And we're going to get that by calling the toGeoJSON method of the burring owl layer. And we need our opening and closing parentheses to execute that method. And so we've converted our entire burring owl layer to a GeoJSON feature class with this one method. And that's what turf needs as an input. It also needs a distance in kilometers. So we want 300 meters. That's 0.3 kilometers. And then we have to tell it what units we're using. So we'll just stick that in the text. And actually, I think it needs an S in there. So now we'll have a GeoJSON object that contains buffers for all the burring owl habitats in the burring owl layer. Now we need to create a layer that Leaflet can understand. And so I'll reference the layer burring owl buffer that we declared. And we'll set that to the leaflet geojson constructor method. And we don't have to use the ajax constructor method that we did before because we're not reading a file off disk. We have an in-memory geojson object that was created by the turf buffer function. So all we need to do is add the variable that references that GeoJSON object into a GeoJSON constructor method. And this can take all those same options as we've seen before. So we're going to style it, but we're not going to have a function that returns a set of path options. We're just going to put the path options in right here, because we're going to apply the same style to every buffer, and it doesn't matter what the attributes are. So that style is going to be color yellow, but the buffer is going to get a dash array, and that dash array will say 5.5. Five. And then I'll also add a fill opacity style, and I'll set that to 0, because all I want to see is the outline. I don't want to see any interior filling. And then I'll go ahead and add it to our map. And I have to do one other thing. And that is because we added a burring owl buffer over top of the burring owl. We added it second. Because of that, a tooltip on the burring owl habitat won't work. And the way to fix that 
is we can call the bring to front method on the burring out layer and that'll bring that in and put it on top of the buffer. All right, let's see how that works. I'm going to save it, go to the map, I'm going to refresh, and something's not happening, so I probably made a mistake. Let's open our Google Developer Tools, see what I did. Syntax error unexpected token line 333. All right. Yeah, I got a period there instead of a comma. Another stupid little mistake. But computers aren't smart enough to understand that. You have to tell them exactly what you want. Alright, we got our burring out habitat, but I'm not seeing a buffer. Let's open Google Developer Tools again and see if it tells us anything. And it doesn't give us any errors. Of course it doesn't. We still haven't downloaded Turf and loaded it into our application. Duh. Okay, so let's go do that now. Go to the Turf documentation, and we'll click on Turf to get to the home page. And then here where it says Download, I'm going to right-click on it, say Save Link As. And then I'm going to go to our Web Map 201, Source. And I'm actually not going to put it in the Plugins directory. I'm going to save it in the Source directory. I'm going to save the plugins for Leaflet plugins, and Turf is not a Leaflet plugin. So I just saved it. Let's double check and make sure it's there. Looks like it's there. And there it is. It's a minimized version, so it's not that easy to read, but it looks like it's good JavaScript. So let's go back to our index. We'll go to the top. And then down here in our script tag, I'm going to copy and paste that one. And just replace this jQuery UI with Turf. All right, I think that'll fix it. Surprising it didn't give us an error message. I'm not sure why. All right, let's refresh. Over here, I thought this was going to be a short lecture. There we go. That looks more like it. We have a 300 meter buffer around all our burrowing owl habitats. We can still see our tooltips because we brought the burrowing owl habitat to the front. And there we go. We have our buffer, so it's that easy. So I'm going to stop this lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to add buffer to our project polygons. And that's going to be a little bit different because, if you remember, one of the attributes of this data set, you can see it here if I hover over it, it's the second one down, so right away width is 50 meters. And some of them have a right away width of 20 meters. And we want to make our buffers correspond to that right away width. So what we're seeing on the screen is actually the right away. And so I'll show you how to do that in the next lecture. And we'll see you then.